Welcome to Bruce Hurwitz Presents Meet the Experts. I'm your host, Bruce Hurwitz of Hurwitz Strategic Staffing. You can find us on the web at hsstaffing.com. I hope you'll consider us for all your staffing, career counseling, and professional writing needs. Momentarily, I will be joined by Tammy Jordan. We will be discussing scaling by outsourcing. Meet the Experts is sponsored by P&K CPAs. P&K is a full-service accounting firm. They provide accounting and consulting services to businesses ranging from startups to small and mid-cap companies to nonprofits as well as high net worth individuals. Contact them today for a free consultation at info at pk-cpas.com or call them at 973-882-8810. They will be happy to be of service. Tammy, welcome to the program. Thank you, Bruce. I'm excited to be here today with you. Well, it is my pleasure. Please take a moment or two and introduce yourself to our viewers. Absolutely. I'm Tammy Durden. I'm the owner of Fearless Business Boss Coaching Company. I um, do business coaching with online service entrepreneurs, and I help them build and create a business that fits their lifestyle rather than squeezing a life around their business. And I do that in several ways through one-on-one -on -one business coaching, as well as a mastermind business coaching group that I have that's open only a few times a year. And I help them from startup to growth to scaling, and I can help at any phase. I would hope everybody knows what it is, but just to be on the safe side, explain what outsourcing is. For that Absolutely. matter, explain also what scaling is. <laughs> okay. Um, well, scaling basically is taking your company from one place and scaling it, moving it up, making it, having it grow um, so that it is growing where you want it to be. And outsourcing is basically um, bringing help on board. You know, it really is. It's rather than an employee, it's hiring basically subcontractors, just like you would for your house. You hire a painter who knows how to paint, right? And they, they might hire somebody else. Um, so, and that's the, similar um, to what you do in a business. You know, many businesses, we're solopreneurs and we get all the hats, we get to wear it all. And a lot of times we get to a place, and I saw this many, many times in my clients where they flatline and they can't seem to break that ceiling. So most of the time, it's time for you to start bringing on a virtual team member to help you so that you can get rid of and get time back so that you can be doing what you need to do. Now, I've always told people that there are two things that they should outsource. The first is payroll because of all the, the the account the accounting, the laws, the taxes, and what have you. It's a headache you don't want to have. And the other, which most people don't understand because they've never had to do it, but if you are doing a lot of mailing, mm -hmm. not emailing, mailing, post office. Mm -hmm outsource that because if you think the tax code is crazy you should see what the uh, postal regulations are like and as i found out the postal service has its own police force and they carry guns nice lady i didn't do anything wrong we were just talking and i we met at a job fair and i said something to her about um uh they're not allowing her to, well, you can't carry guns. And she looks at me and all of a sudden I realized she, she can. She was very thin. And she took me aside and she said, I'm going to tell you something. I have to buy my jackets in the men's department. And I looked at her and I said, what do you mean? She goes, I'll find a slacks that I like and then I'll go and find a men's jacket that matches the slacks because women's jackets are form-fitting mm -hmm. and she's mm -hmm. carrying a gun so it has to be a little bit baggy and that was it but anyways 
to cover what would, that. Yes. What <laughs> would you recommend that people outsource? Absolutely. Well, by people, um, I mean business. Right. Business. Yes. Business owners. Yeah, absolutely. Well, there's a few things. I, I actually, I think the very first thing to do is to figure out what you're good at <laughs> and know that and what you're not good at, first of all, you know, and something you really dislike doing. So those are the two major things that I usually tell clients to start with, because the thing that you don't like, you're spending too much time on. And the thing that you're not good at, you're spending too much time on. And so if you figure out how much your hourly rate is and multiply it out <laughs> by the time that you're spending, you're going to spend a lot less on, say, a virtual assistant or a digital marketer to do it, a social media manager, something of that nature. I also recommend that many clients start outsourcing subcontracting for client work because at some point you need to get to a point where you're working on not in the business as we all know i had a client and i agree with everything you said it's outsourcing 101 if you are or <laughs> scaling 101 or management 101 and i said to him well tell me what you like about the work that you do he was the owner of the company and he listed everything of an administrative nature he liked doing the books he liked doing the bookkeeping and he had an accounting degree so he knew what he was doing and every he just enjoyed all of the administrative stuff and he didn't want to give it up and i said to him well you've got to work as you said I don't know if I use the same words. You've got to work on your business and not in your business. Or you can hire people. Well, what am I going to hire them to do? Well, you're the owner of the company. You should be doing sales and marketing. And he said, I hate sales and marketing. <laughs> I said, that's why you go out and you hire somebody to do sales. Mm -hmm. And it was hard for him. It didn't work. I got him a really good salesperson. And he admitted it. He said, you, I'm not going to hold you to your guarantee. I give a six-month guarantee. He said, I'm not holding you to your guarantee. This was my fault, not your fault, not his fault. I just can't let go. And... He wanted to do one thing with sales. I wanted to do something else and can't let go. What do you do when you have a client who you're consulting with who can't let go? Um, well, like I said, the first place that we usually start are those two areas. So that's helpful. And that if they've never had or worked with virtual professionals before, it helps them because they don't want to do it and they don't like doing it. They're not good at it. So I say start with one thing, one thing first, and give one task to that professional. And that's usually a great place to start because they really don't want to do it. They don't like doing it and they know it takes them way too much time. So usually that's a good place to delegate and to take <laughs> sometimes you're prying their fingers off of it but <laughs> you continue to encourage them and tell them this is necessary if they want to continue to grow their business what businesses should not scale what businesses mm -hmm. shouldn't grow that's an interesting question i don't know if there are any that should not scale um to be honest, other than I will say this, um, depending on priorities, like I have a client and her priorities are your young kids and she doesn't have to have, to have the income. She likes it and she likes what she's doing. So we're slowly scaling, but it always comes back to her priorities of her children and her family first. Mm -hmm. So in that case, we're not pushing to scale. You know what I mean? We are scaled slightly and then we will continue to as the children get older and things like that. 
But I think depending on your priorities, for me, I'm disabled. So being able to rest at certain times a day is important. And I'm happy where I am. I don't have to be making billions of dollars, mm -hmm. right? I mean, yes, nice. But at the same time, if I'm able to work from bed some days, that's a win for me. So, you know, certain certain circumstances and those who have priorities, mompreneurs who are trying to juggle it all, you know, they may not want to scale as quickly as others. I had someone contact me. I get emails all the time and I immediately click block sender. <laughs> uh, I know from the either from the subject or from the first few words, no professional rights. Hey, Bruce. You know, it doesn't, you know, so I block. I don't even bother. Right. But one guy called me up and he said that he's been following me on LinkedIn and he sees what I'm doing and it's impressive, blah, 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 blah. And he says, you know, I take businesses like yours and I make them seven figures. <laughs> so I used both hands and figured out that that would mean a million dollars. And I said, I don't want a million dollars. Right. It doesn't mm -hmm. appeal to me. A million dollars I see as problems. <laughs> I said, it's like when someone wins the lottery. Now, I know it's a, uh, it's a different thing, but somebody wins the lottery. There were a few recently, there were a billion dollars. So they walk away with about $500 million after taxes. And then they lose it all. They don't know what to do with it. Now, I would hope that I would not be that irresponsible. I would hope that my accountant would not allow me to do anything stupid. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which brings me to two areas that I didn't mention for outsourcing. And I don't know if it's exactly outsourcing in the same sense of doing the work, although the accountant does the work. But having an accountant and an attorney to give you advice to say no you can't do that that's stupid i can give you an example um one guy wanted to uh, start selling uh marijuana it was legal in the state that he was in he didn't understand the accounting part of it because in those days, you could not put marijuana money into a bank. It had right. to be a credit union or whatever. And you couldn't mingle it. So it would be two separate books. And his account said, no way. It'll cost you a fortune. Talk to us about the importance of trusted advisors. Absolutely. Um, well, I always recommend to clients, you know, that they seek the advice of legal counsel as well as have an accountant. Now, I have an accounting background, not a degree, but I did bookkeeping. I was an assistant accountant. But I will tell you, after doing it for so long, I was ready to hand that over. <laughs> and the laws have changed so much. You know, you don't want to end up in the wrong place with that end. So um, also, I will say that Legal Shield is a great alternative to those who can't afford to have a legal person on file all the time. Mm -hmm. Legal Shield is great for checking your contracts or, you know, sending things and saying, you know, for example, I had, I was, I was approached by a group and they wanted me to begin to um, work with them in certain areas, providing videos, knowledge, you know, and writing and things like that. So I thought I went through the contract and there were some things that were a little, I'm not sure about this. Does this mean I own it or they own it? Right. And so I, you know, reached out to the legal assistants through Legal Shield and they got back to me and said, you know, this is a really fuzzy area. They're not being very clear here. And I said, well, what does that mean? Does that mean I just shouldn't do it? She said, probably. So yeah. I did not. I did not move forward. I didn't get stuck in something that could have caused me a lot of harm later down the road. So I do. I agree with you. I think trusted advisors are huge as well as a business coach. Even the most, you know, the biggest 
entrepreneurs out there that we know have business coaches. So that's another, you know, or consultant. Um, you know, that's another way that people need to consider having someone in their on their side, basically. I was laughing because you reminded me of an uh, an incident where I have a one page contract. It's real simple. It's clear cut. <laughs> the, the, there's nothing to it. This is record, uh, recruiting. It's not um, uh, buying a business. Right. And I met with the owner of this company who was looking for recruiting services and I gave him the contract and he said, well, I have a legal department. They'll review it. Go well, fine. <laughs> and the next day I came in and they had a 30 page contract for me to sign. <laughs> and I didn't even look at it. And I just pushed it back to him. I said, no, if you want to work with me, you sign my contract. Mm -hmm. This tells me that you are looking for a reason not to pay, right. not right. to uh, fulfill your responsibilities and your commitments. And I'm not interested. If Very you're good. honest, one page is good enough. I'm honest. <laughs> I'm going to do what I tell you I'm going to do. And he looked at me and he looked at the lawyers. And he said, I told you you wouldn't sign it. <laughs> and they looked at him and they said, you can't sign that one. Oh. And that was it. Didn't work. Yeah. He followed yeah. his advisors and I followed my common sense. Right. No loss, no foul. Right. Mm -hmm. It may have been a disaster for me to sign his. Mm -hmm. It may have been a disaster for him not signing mine. I don't know. Right. But right. you go with your if they're not if you don't trust them, then they're not a trusted advisor. So yeah. Don't take their advice and exactly. don't have. Them. Right. You had mentioned that you have a mastermind group. Yes. I'm interested in that. Mm -hmm. Tell us about it. Mine's a little different than most people think of. They either think of master class, like it's going to be a classroom or, um, you know, just a mastermind group. Many do it for like 12 weeks or a certain time frame. Mine is actually a combination of group coaching and mastermind, basically. And so my group is ongoing and we meet every week for 90 minutes. Each group meets every week for 90 minutes and you meet. I limit it to 10 people. So it's very focused so that you can receive coaching from me within the group, as well as get information and learn from colleagues. You get accountability because we set goals and you have to, you know, achieve certain things as well as, um, you know, a lot of people form referral partnerships even within the group. So it's, yeah, it's a great, I love my groups. If I had it my way, I would just do groups. <laughs> <laughs> I was in a mastermind just once and it was exactly what I expected up to a point. There were, I don't remember, eight or 10, I think there were 10 people around the table. So there were eight mm -hmm. participants, the organizer, and every week there'd be a guest speaker who mm -hmm. would talk on a different subject, an expert, and then there would be a discussion on how that would be relevant for different mm -hmm. businesses. And it didn't work because there were members of the group who wanted to one up the expert and mm. wasn't for me, but anyways, yeah. I did have one client um, that was similar and always wanted to write in the chat as I was speaking and addressing things. And so it was very distracting. So I ended up um, disabling my chat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And, wow. and she decided to leave the group after a bit, but that was one of those that you're okay, <laughs> you know. Well, it didn't work, but uh, exactly. Be well. Goodbye. Yeah, I enjoy you, but yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. We had a well, not we uh, this lady in uh, Manhattan since passed away. She would have a salon in her house, if you know the old European. Okay. So there would be a debate and I was invited to debate something. And it wasn't a debate usually 
two people debating, but she'd have a group of like-minded people and then invite someone who would disagree with them. <laughs> and that person would make the presentation. I found out very quickly that everybody, including this, uh, the guest, if they had been there before, went because the woman could cook. The food was great. That's who, the best she, reason. Who cares about this subject? And it would be like five minute presentation, five minute presentation, 10 minute uh, debate and or discussion. Debate's right. a big word. And then the smell of the food uh -huh. wafting in from the kitchen. Everybody just wanted to eat. But anyways. It kept the debates down to a minimum. Oh, I yeah. Bet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the more the stomach was rumbling, the less time people wanted to discuss whatever the topic was. Absolutely. How does... Describe the transition in scaling a business. Mm. You've got a hundred thousand dollars in profit. No, oh, good for you. You, I didn't say I did. I said you have a hundred thousand dollars in profit. Mm -hmm. I would never say what my finances are. I hope not. You have a hundred thousand dollars in profit. You want to scale to a million. Mm. What's the process? Well, first of all, I would have I would have suggested they start scaling before then, <laughs> um, right. because I think I think that they would have hit a wall before then if they're on their own. Depending on the type of business, mind you, I work with online service providers, so you know, for them, yeah, it's going to be very difficult to hit that first without building an agency without building a virtual team or or that kind of thing and it takes that team in order to continue that they can begin to um, work more on the business and sales and things of that nature so it takes time but um, the very first step in any outsourcing really is about knowing when to outsource first of all you know what are the reasons that you need to outsource is it because you're maxed out on clients you can't accept anymore is it because you're not having any time with family and friends you know what is the real reason because you need to know that or it's going to be much more difficult to scale the next thing is knowing where to get reputable and dependable team members right and that's you know you know better than anybody because you do you do that all day long right <laughs> so um and i i work with where do you find virtual professionals and so i help you know in that area and tell them we're reputable you know, places are to find them. And then we talk about the onboarding process. You know, this, I will say even before that though, they need to make sure they have their processes and systems documented. I can't stress that enough. Document your systems <laughs> and processes because otherwise it's gonna be a waste bringing anybody on because they're not gonna be able to follow what you've been doing. So that's an important step. And then you um, have to begin to lay out a process for onboarding your team members, you know, the welcome letter, the contracts, you know, all of the things. Are you going to invite them to your project management system? What is it, you know, that you need to invite them to? And I always recommend they have an email address that is the same as your business so that it is professional. Um, so those are, you know, those are the things that I would begin to start. But in regard to what I would outsource, again, I think, you know, for for the people that I work, generally speaking, some of it can be copywriting, some of it is virtual assistant work or social media management, because they just don't want to do that. So those are generally the first things they outsource. I want to give you an opportunity to clarify and define a word you used a lot. Uh -oh. And today it could be mean a few things. What do you mean by virtual? Sure. Um, well, for me, that's how I started years ago, 16 years ago, online. 
So I started online working online and that's how we work virtually. So people delegate work you know, they had delegated the work. Um, you know, I ran a digital marketing agency for years and that was my company. We did social media management. We did blogging. We did, I eventually brought on a graphic designer. We also did email campaigns. So you talked about mailing, but we did massive emails, right? <laughs> um, and so those were things that were done virtually online. Well, actually, I was about to say, yeah, but there aren't as many um, regulations for emailing there as there are for mailing, but there are, especially yes. if you have uh, clients or customers in the European Union, mm -hmm. then you can really get into trouble. The U.S. is getting just as bad, though. Every state, I mean, you know, different states have started um, putting in place different laws. Well, in too. Canada, as I understand it, there's something called this can spam act and what i like about that mm -hmm. is you can't sign anybody up you can't i'm sorry you can't send mm -hmm. an email to somebody without getting their proactive permission if you right. do you're in a lot of trouble so first you gotta get yeah. permission it's not like what i get every day a newsletter unsubscribe why are you unsubscribe i never signed up for this mm. well mm. in canada they would be paying a fine that is bad because, because the reality is that all of us that is really what we should be doing you should not have be putting anybody on your email list that hasn't signed up for it for some reason that's why i like my wordpress blog I've got 44,100 subscribers. <laughs> I didn't enter 44,000 emails. <laughs> you know, uh, no, no. I wouldn't have a business if I had. For LinkedIn, my um, newsletter has 5,000 subscribers. Yeah. I didn't enter 5,000 uh, LinkedIn accounts they have to proactively say they want to get every week the nonsense that I post. And that's fine. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I want to share your contact information and ask one final question. Is there anything I did not ask, which you wish I had asked? And if I had asked, what would you have said? <laughs> um. Mm, that's a good question. You you um, have put out some really good questions today, Bruce. Thank you. Um, I, I just think, you know, don't be, I think, don't be afraid to do it, to take that step. Um, a lot of people will get to that point and just don't know what to do next with it. And it's not as complicated as you think, but, you know, people can be there to assist you. I like to say in my business, virtual handholding is included. <laughs> so um, I love that. And you'd be surprised. Um, I do have a scaling checklist for people if they'd like to use that. And a mini session, um, you'd be surprised what we can get done in that time. Well, Tammy, thank you very much. You've given a great deal of... Uh material for uh, business owners to mull over and on their behalf and mine i thank you well thank you for having me it's been fun i really appreciate it it has been a pleasure i'm bruce herwitz thank you for watching and as always stay focused on success